So hello everybody. I hope you're having a great day. If you are preparing for a Cambridge English exam from A2 key all the way to C2 proficiency, then you've come to the right place. The speaking test can often be a little bit scary, can't it? But don't worry, I've, I've got your back. Um, today we are going to have a look at something that can really make a difference in your preparation. The marking criteria of the speaking test. So now you might be asking yourself, why do I need to know about these marking criteria? But let me say it this way. If you know what the examiners look for, then you can prepare better and hopefully score higher marks in the exam. There are five areas we'll explore. Language, which covers your grammar and vocabulary. Discourse management, or how you organize and connect your ideas. Pronunciation, which is all about how clear and understandable your speech actually is. Interactive communication, which is how you interact, not only with the other candidate in the room, but also with the examiner. And last but not least, global achievement where the examiners give you marks for the overall impression they have of your speaking test. So I'm going to go through each of these criteria with you, explain to you what exactly they mean, and I might also give you a couple of tips on how you can actually work on these areas in your own practice, so that when your exam day comes around, you are ready and prepared. So no matter if you are preparing for A2 or B2 or C2, um, I think that this video will definitely be useful for you. So grab a notebook and maybe a cup of coffee or tea and get yourself comfortable because we are going to have a look at the marking criteria in the speaking exam. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, and subscribe and share the video with people you know and that might benefit from it as well. And with all that being said, let's get right into it. Hi and welcome to Teacher Phil, where I help people like you pass their Cambridge exam. So let's get started with the first point, language. This is about using the right vocabulary and grammar. But of course, it doesn't just mean to use correct vocabulary and grammar. It also means to use it in an appropriate way, meaning the right language in the right situation. First up, grammar. Grammar can be a little bit scary, I know. We studied so much and then on exam day, we have to use it correctly. But again, don't put too much pressure on yourself. I always recommend using the forms that you feel comfortable with. Don't twist and turn and try to do anything spectacular that you can't really do. Just use the forms that you know and simply go with the flow and everything will be okay. As to vocabulary, of course you need to show a wide range of words and expressions, but again it is even more important that you use these words and expressions in the right context and the right moment. So that means using the right words to communicate your ideas clearly. So here are a couple of tips that might help you become better at all of this. First of all, read and listen as much as you can. If you read and listen to things in English, you get exposed to all of these different expressions and structures and your brain automatically works with them and you become better simply by enjoying some content that you would enjoy in your own language as well. Secondly, try to practice speaking as much as you can. Even if you practice in front of the mirror, describing your day, talking about things you like or don't like. Um, for example, the book that you're reading or the podcast that you are listening to. That way you can simply get out some words and get into the rhythm and get into the habit of speaking in English. And most importantly, don't be afraid of making mistakes. Mistakes 
are the only reason why we learn. We need to do things wrong, analyze those mistakes, get feedback and improve based on that. So please, please, please make a lot of mistakes in your practice, but also learn from them. So next, we have our second marking criterion, discourse management. This might sound a little bit formal, but what it actually means is um, how you can connect and express your ideas in the speaking test. It is what makes your speech clear, brings it in a logical order, and with that makes it easier for the listener to follow your ideas. So effective discourse management means that you know how to put your thoughts into some kind of logical structure. Um, you're not just jumping around from one idea to the next without any connection, but instead um, you're guiding the listener along with your thoughts using, for example, clear beginnings, middle parts and endings. So one way to do well in this area of your speaking is um, to use linking expressions. Uh, for example, you can use words like because, but, however. All these words help you connect your ideas, not only in a written text, but also when you speak. However, discourse management is not only about linking your ideas, but it is also about how well you develop these thoughts. So that means that you don't just state a fact or opinion, but you explain it, giving examples or reasons, and so explain why your opinion matters. So here are some tips to master discourse management. So practice speaking on a variety of topics and for each point you make, try to expand on it by asking yourself why or how. Um, also, once again, listening to podcasts um, or reading articles or watching talks can be very helpful. Uh, simply pay attention to how the speakers organize their ideas and then try to copy and mimic that structure in your own practice. So remember, the goal here is to express your ideas in a way that is easy to follow for whoever is listening. Take your time um, practicing, structuring your speech. This will not only help you in your exam, but in any type of situation where you have to express your opinion or show if you agree or disagree with someone else. Next up, let's talk about pronunciation. First of all, Pronunciation is not about speaking in a specific accent like British or American. That is really not the point. It is simply about speaking clearly so that somebody who listens to you can understand what you're saying. So good pronunciation involves different things. For example, the clear articulation of single sounds, the right use and placement of stress, uh, intonation at a word and sentence level, and also the rhythm of your speech. For example, take a word like photograph and see how the stress in the word changes when we change the word just a little bit. So photograph can become photographer or photographic. So Putting the stress on the wrong syllable can be confusing for the listener and sometimes even change the meaning of a word. So how can you improve your pronunciation? Of course, the answer is practice. Listen to native speakers, for example, in films or in songs, and listen very carefully to how they say different words. Then later you can try to copy their intonation and their rhythm. This way you can improve your English while simply having fun. Another pretty effective way um, that you can do by yourself is to practice out loud. When you practice your pronunciation, record yourself the same way I'm doing right now with my video. Then you can watch it and you can see and perhaps compare if your pronunciation comes close to the original that you listen to. 
And of course, at the beginning, it might become a little bit frustrating. But please don't get discouraged. Improving your pronunciation is a slow step-by-step -step process. And please don't be afraid of getting feedback from a teacher or perhaps from a friend whose English level is a little bit higher than yours. Take their feedback and use it to improve your pronunciation further and further. So the fourth part of the speaking test marking criteria is interactive communication. So this is the area where you demonstrate that you can effectively take part in a conversation, exchanging ideas and opinions, and also reacting in an appropriate way to the things that others say. In the exam, that is not only the other candidate, but also the examiner. So it is more than simply responding to somebody's questions. It is about listening very carefully to what somebody else says and then to form an answer that refers back to that previous turn by your candidate or to the question uh, of the examiner. It is your opportunity to show that you can communicate naturally in English in many different contexts and that you can adjust your answers and the things you say um, to different scenarios and contexts. For example, if you didn't fully understand what the examiner or the other candidate said, how do you ask for clarification? Or how do you express that you agree or disagree in a way that doesn't just kill the discussion? These are all key skills in interactive communication. Practicing interactive communication might be one of the most difficult areas because you need somebody to speak to. So try to engage in different types of discussions that can even be online in written form. The most important thing is that you practice not only giving your own thoughts, but to respond to what other people say. So you might practice with a friend or somebody from your family, or you can look online for a language exchange partner. Another tip is to at least get a little bit more familiar with certain expressions and phrases that we often use in English, because that can make you sound a little bit more natural uh, in the right situations. Remember, the goal of interactive communication is that you demonstrate that you can communicate effectively in different contexts. It is about showing your ability to adapt your speech, negotiate in meaningful conversations, and maintain a conversation using the right language. Okay, so there is one more crucial aspect that we need to discuss when it comes to the marking criteria and that is global achievement. Communicative achievement is about the big picture. It is about showing the examiners that you can communicate clearly and fluently over a variety of topics and different contexts and scenarios. It is, if you want to say that way, the sum of all the parts. It checks how you integrate your grammar and vocabulary with your ability to organize your ideas your ability to pronounce these things correctly and, of course, how you communicate them with other people. You need to think of global achievement as an opportunity for you to demonstrate that you can use the language not only correctly, but also confidently and comfortably in a way that feels natural to other people around you. It is about showing your command of the language in a general sense. So now I hope that I've given you a better idea of what these different marking criteria are and mm, what you have to be careful with, but we still have to look at how the marking in the speaking exam actually works. And um, first of all, we need to consider that there are a few differences between the levels. Um, for example, at the higher levels in C1 and C2, you can see that language is broken up into two separate criteria, grammatical resource or grammar and lexical resource, which means vocabulary. Um, whereas at, 
all the other levels, uh, these two are combined uh, into just one language marking criterion. Also at A2 key, uh, discourse management doesn't exist yet. So there are only four marking criteria in total when we include uh, global achievement. So for each of the criteria across all the levels, you can score a maximum of five marks. Depending on the level, the marks are multiplied in a specific way and then added up to give you your final test score. Note that uh, global achievement is usually weighted more strongly than the other criteria. So you can see that a strong overall impression, like what is tested in global achievement, is really more important than some very small details that we might pay attention to in the other marking criteria. So then this test score you need to convert to a scale score, which is your final mark in the speaking test. This conversion from the test score to the scale score, however, is a little bit complicated and it might be too much to explain in this video. So I've decided to leave a link in the description box for you where you can find an explanation for all the different levels. And I hope that that way you will get a better picture of how to convert these scores. And there you have it. Now you know everything you need um, to understand how the marking works in your speaking exam, all the way from language to global achievement. I certainly believe in you and your abilities. And now it's time for you to take all my ideas and tips and put them to practice so you can improve your speaking and prepare effectively for the things that the examiners look for in the speaking exam. So if you've enjoyed this video, then just give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and check out my other content. I wish you the best of luck for your exam preparation. But if you want, I can also be your teacher. I offer online classes as well as writing feedback. And of course, you can find all the links to that in the description box below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video.